So you're looking to soundproof a room or a wall or maybe just a window. And by not knowing this crucial soundproofing advice or tip or knowledge, then you're probably not going to succeed as well in soundproofing whatever it is you're wanting to soundproof. And that is as simply as knowing the type of frequency that you're trying to block. Are you trying to block a low frequency, high frequency, or mid-range frequency? So in this video, I'll be telling you what type of sound or what type of noise consists of these different types of frequency, and also what type of soundproofing method should you apply to soundproof that certain type of frequency? Because if you're wanting to soundproof, let's say, a low frequency noise, and you're hearing that the best way to soundproof a wall is basically to add mass, then you might be disappointed because that works better for higher frequency noise. And I'll go a little bit deeper into it in this video. So let's start with a low frequency sound. That is basically a sound that you can feel, the rumbling of, let's say, thunder or if you turn up your stereo and you crank up the bass, that is a low frequency sound. The more bass you have, the frequency lowers, it creates a rumble, and you can actually feel that noise. So basically, a, a easy way to know what type of frequency that you're trying to block, can you feel the noise? If you can actually feel it, it is more of a lower frequency noise, and the type of soundproofing that you'll need to apply to, let's say, the wall, will be different than if you're trying to block a high frequency noise. But first, let's move on to middle frequency. So a middle frequency noise is basically a noise between 500 and around 2000 hertz. Usually it's just a person talking that you can easily understand. And sounds in this range has a more tinny horn-like quality to them, but you still can't really feel it anymore. It is more something that you can hear, but not necessarily feel. And a higher frequency sound is anything above 2000 hertz and around 10,000 hertz. So basically sounds around this frequency is very easily understandable, audible. So music without that, without too much bass. And once you get all the way up to around 10,000 hertz, it's more like birds chirping, that high frequency, high pitch noise. And to block a noise like that is very different than to try to isolate a vibrational rumble. But I'll give you a few more examples and I'll use musical instruments. So if you're trying to block noise because you're playing different musical instruments, this is another way to determine what type of instruments are creating low, medium, and higher frequency. Now, if you're looking to isolate something in the lower range, it would be instruments such as organs, pianos, cellos. These are around the 5 to 70 frequency range. However, a piano can be also considered a medium frequency range because of the higher frequency of some notes that can bring it all the way up to around 500 hertz. And basically, the highest notes on a flute would make its way into the lower range of a high frequency at around 21 to 2500 hertz. But also, bringing back the piano, the highest note on a piano would bring it into the high frequency because it runs around 4000 hertz. So basically, if you have something like a piano that you have the very low and high frequency, we should use the method of soundproofing low frequency noise because with low frequency noise soundproofing, you're actually also helping with the higher frequency and then you can just add a little bit of mass for that higher frequency. Now, to give you an example of how to soundproof for, let's say, low frequency is more something that you have to decouple because of the vibration low frequencies create, just adding an extra layer of drywall is just not going to cut it because the vibration is going to get right through that drywall. So if you have a very low frequency, something like a piano or just you want to isolate, let's say, the outer wall because you have a lot of train noise, then it is good to create something like a double wall if you have the space to do so. And the video right here will show you what a double wall is and go more into detail about how to build one or if it's worth it. 
And also another way to decouple is by using something called resilient channel. Now this resilient channel basically isolates the outer wall, so the drywall from the studs. So it creates a, it basically decouples the wall from the actual studs. So by doing that, when you have a vibrational noise, it goes through the drywall as it should, but then it doesn't get right to the stud wall. And also some people might wonder, well, the resilient channel is connected to the stud and to the drywall, but what decouples, what disconnects that is a rubber piece that goes between the stud and the resilient channel. So that rubber is meant to absorb that vibration. So that's how a resilient channel work. And if you want to know more, right up here, we'll show you everything you need to know about resilient channel and if it's worth it for you. And also, if you want to isolate a lower frequency noise, it's not a bad idea to, if you already have your wall open, meaning you don't have any drywall on the wall, it's not a bad idea to add some acoustical insulation. Now this acoustical insulation is more meant to absorb noise, absorb sound, and it will also help in absorbing the vibration of your lower frequency. So that will work much better than your typical pink insulation. And then you just cover it up with the drywall. And of course, if you have lower frequency noise, it is still good to add a second layer of drywall. That is not only good for higher frequency noise, but it's also good for lower frequency noise as well, because with that vibration, you're most likely going to have a lot of sound coming through. But let's move on to a medium frequency to a high frequency. Now, low frequency is great to decouple, but that's not really necessary if you're in the mid to high range. When you're in the mid to high range, it's a lot better to just add mass, adding an extra layer of drywall and also adding some sort of compound in between the drywall, whether it's noise isolation compound or mass loaded vinyl. I'll have links in the description below of all these products and you can just go ahead and see if it's the right products for the type of noise that you're trying to isolate. But as I said, high frequency, you just want to add mass. That's the best way to isolate it. And also if you're trying to isolate a noise coming from the outside, it's always good to find out if the noise is primarily coming from the wall or coming through the window. So if you basically add more mass on the wall, but you have a really thin window and all of the noise is actually coming through the window, then it's good to take care of the window. It's good to know where the noise is actually coming from, especially on an outer wall. If the sound is coming through the window, then it's best to treat the window and kind of leave the wall alone, or at least after you're done treating the window, then you can find out, well, did it actually work enough that I can live with this? Or do I have to move on and replace some aspects of the wall or just add mass? A lot of people will just go and soundproof a wall and kind of leave the window alone because sometimes a window is more complicated because it's not that simple to actually having to remove that window and add another one. And what's nice, now they have products that you don't even need to replace the window. You can just add something right in front of a window. It's a clear, well, watch that video right up there. I show a full review of something that blocks the noise very well from coming through the window. Now if you, now this type of product will only work really well if you have a thin single pane window, but if you, have, if you already have a triple pane window, an item like that will not really work that well. It's more for single, very thin windows. In that case, it works very well. So that's why in this video, I already have a thick window, so I just open the windows and shown how much noise is it actually stopping all by itself and it was pretty impressive and it's not that expensive simply because it's a DIY project. So that's one thing to note. Now, if you have any more advice that you've heard or you've learned along the way that really helped you in your soundproofing project, please leave a comment down below. And the next video I make about the best soundproofing advice, I'll make sure to give you a shout out. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.